Hello everyone, Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for The Last Voyage of the Demeter. This is a new film from 2023, rated R, with a runtime of an hour and 58 minutes. As of the recording of this video, we have a Rotten Tomato score of 48% for the critics, 75% for the audience. 48% feels a little too uh, too low, a little bit too much. Uh, so let me give you a quick synopsis and we'll get into some of the people that work behind this film. Uh, so... Based on a single chilling chapter from Bram Stoker's classic novel, Dracula, The Last Voyage of the Demeter tells the terrifying story of the merchant ship Demeter, which was chartered to carry private cargo, 50 unmarked wooden crates from Carpathia to London. Strange events befall, the doomed crew as they attempt to survive the ocean voyage, stalked each night by merciless persons on board the ship, when the Demeter finally arrives, the shores of England. Uh, it is charred, derelict wreck with no trace of its crew. This is directed by Andre Overdahl, uh, who also directed Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Uh, so I'm already familiar a little bit with his work. Uh, and written by Bragi F. Shute and Zach Olkowicz. Uh, and it stars Corey Hawkins as Clemens, uh, Aisling Francoisi as Anna, Liam Cunningham as Captain Elliot, and David Desmalchian as Warchick. Uh, who is the main, the first mate in the ship. Um, I really had a good time at this film. Uh, I think it is definitely a bit of a slow burn. And I think that slow pace can uh, sometimes get a little bit like, um, uh, I don't know, just it, 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 it kind of brings down the momentum of the film that's gathering. Uh, so I can definitely see that as a, a, bit, a bit of a complaint. Uh, but overall, I think the movie is entertaining. It builds up suspense very well. It builds like I think even if you know what's going to happen, this is one of those films that you kind of know what's going to happen at the end, but not always because obviously that you know they're trying to tell a story and they're trying to find the fun way to uh, uh, subvert your expectations. Um, but this is a very straightforward movie too. Like just you know, this is a crew and there's a Dracula on board and things are going to happen. Um, so, yeah, I think something that kind of distinguishes the film from other things is just a, a big atmosphere of like a dread and also just kind of how it doesn't it doesn't sway back from like showing you the gore uh, and, and these like details. Like it, it's definitely uh, has a lot of things that I didn't expect to happen. I'll get into, we will go into spoilers for one thing uh, at towards the end of the video, but it definitely doesn't shy back from any of the violence or, or anything that you would expect. Like this kind of, this film kind of goes for it. Uh, I think there's a lot of really uh, interesting and gruesome makeup and practical effects that are just, they really add so much to the film uh, and it, it just helps you craft the gore. Uh, and, you know, this creature that just kind of fuels your nightmares, this crew that is in despair, stuck in at sea, uh, because the, their trip is it's a long trip, right? It's not something that they're just going from one port to the other. Uh, they're crossing through the Mediterranean all the way to uh, London, this final destination here. Uh, so it's a it's a trip that was going to take them, I believe, about a month. Uh, so so there's there's so much to build. Right. Um, and then, like, there's also the mystery of like who, what's happening, right? Nobody in the ship understands. Uh, things begin to unfold, uh, you know, and and, and just kind of like it goes this in a, in a it, it's in a really fun way that it shows you everything that's happening. Um, it does rely a little bit on your prior knowledge of like what Dracula's uh, abilities or powers or whatever you want to call them are, um, and it it may feel formulaic. Uh, but I think it's still very effective in when it comes to the horror. Um, like I said, it doesn't ever get like uh, too gruesome where you wouldn't want to watch it, but it gets gruesome enough where you're like, oh, this is messed up, right? Uh, so yeah, really cool. Obviously, being in a ship, like the whole set of the ship, uh, just overall in, in itself brings a, a level of danger and, and dread and, and uh, the atmosphere that it builds. Um, you know, and then being stuck out at sea with storms and stuff like that, like just everything's kind of in place uh, for for things to devolve this way. So it's um, my only complaint that it was a little bit too long. I think two hours is a little bit much for this film. They they definitely could have 
condense a few of the things to make you maybe shave off like 10, 15 minutes. Uh, but Overall, I mean, I think I think people are going to revisit this film in the future and maybe give it a little bit more credit than than it's currently getting. I don't know why I have that suspicion that this film is just going to become something that people go like, oh, this is this. I think this will find an audience when it goes to home video. Um, But we'll see. I don't know how it's doing at the theater. My theater was actually not quite full but it was you know there was there was a few people in it for a, a saturday morning matinee so yeah now i'm gonna get into spoilers because there's one thing that this movie did that i can't believe that it did uh so spoilers coming ahead uh so in the film we're introduced to a little boy named toby who's the grandkid of the captain who's played by uh leon cunningham from you know game of thrones um he <sighs> They killed the little boy, and <laughs> that's wild. Like I, I, you know, movies tend not to do that to children. Um, so this movie just kind of went there, and I was, I was very surprised when it happened. I figured maybe like either they wouldn't show it, or or they would find a way to like maybe have a few people survive that are you know like obviously nobody's gonna believe them. Uh, I don't know. I really thought he was going to make it to the end and uh, he did not. So, uh, yeah, that was crazy. Like that really took me by surprise. Uh, that's the only thing I really want to mention in spoilers. I think all the performances were a lot of fun. Uh, nothing really stood out too much. Uh, this this Malchin is so good, though, in, in his role. Like he just kind of feels like he belongs in that era of time, too. So, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this movie. Uh, so if you've seen it, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. As always, thank you for watching. Everyone remember to share, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when we go live. That is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff here in the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.